The Mystery Files is a journal written by the author Nielsen Williams, a.k.a. Up one Aquina. The journal was carried over from the audiobook Raising Queen White Blood Cells, this is a true story about Nielsen Williams a.k.a. Biapone Aquina experiences and struggle of being a gang member and mentor. The mystery files are five written pages. Each page will build from the last. These files are an accurate account of trials and tribulations from the life and times of Nielsen Williams a.k.a. Biup One Aquina. This is a true story of sex, deceit, spirituality, and mystery. Bear witness to the phenomenon. The Mystery Files, File No. 1 On this day of October 29, 2007 I Nielsen Williams aka B Up One Aquina decided to document my life in this journal. I will call this journal The Mystery Files. These files are actual situations and events that I have experienced throughout my life. This documentation will include my opinions and thoughts of different subject matters. I have decided to write and self-publish these files for various reasons. I really believe documenting these files will help educate people across the world. I also believe that some of the strange phenomenon I've encountered needs to be shared with others. In my efforts to protect the innocent the first will sometimes mention fictitious names. However the stories I speak about are accurate accounts of my memory. I've written and recorded other material in the past. Most have been hip-hop rap songs with some rhythm and blues. I have also written a manuscript called Raising a Hood in which I updated and renamed Raising Queen White Blood Cells. This is a true story based on my experience as a gang member and mentor. Upon the ending of the audiobook Raising Queen White Blood Cells the recording turns into a journal during the year 2002. The mystery files are the continuance of the journal which began upon the end of the audiobook Raising Queen White Blood Cells. I have seen and been through so much since 2002. There have been many deaths in my neighborhood due to reported gang violence. I've also been exposed to strange encounters I can only try to explain. On or about June 23, 2002. I was beaten by several Inglewood police officers. I suffered life-threatening injuries and was in a coma for approximately 24 hours. The incident eventually became newsworthy and was broadcasted worldwide. I hooked up with several lawyers, Sadie Johns, the late Johnny Cochran and Steve Lehrman. On my behalf my lawyers filed a civil lawsuit against the Inglewood police officers and the city of Inglewood. Ultimately a settlement was reached and I began to move on with my life. However things would never be the same. Strange events began to happen. I remember feeling as if someone was watching me. First it was just a feeling, eventually it became apparent. One day I returned home from work. At the time I was living with my mother and my cousin Eric. As I walked into the house, Eric approached me and told me that while he was having his personal phone installed into his room the man in charge of installation discovered a phone tap or bug on his phone and or on the line. He continued to tell me that the man said the tap or bug was of a high quality and meant that they were really listening to someone in the house. The tap or bug was on the phone line outside the house, which made the phone itself a live microphone. Of course I suspected they were listening to me. I just sued the city of Inglewood and I knew they would not make my life easy. This was the first sign of reported evidence that seemed to prove my suspicion to be correct. It would be the beginning of a list of things that were to happen. Although I was sure the police and or the feds were watching me. I still had feelings that didn't sit right with me. I felt as if something else was also happening. I couldn't put my finger on it. I just felt an overwhelming feeling of wickedness and deceit. It was as if I was going through something that I hadn't seen before, but God has been preparing me for. One night I had a dream about a girl and a guy playing me for a fool. The girl was pretending to be my friend and the guy was using the girl to set me up. Dreaming is something that everyone does. However, when I dream I usually dream of true events. But it does depend on the dream. I usually can tell when the dream is real. All my life I mostly played by the rules. I didn't think of myself as a saint, 
but I always kept things real. But my life as I knew it was about to change. The Mystery Files, File Number 2. Originally written on November 18, 2007. Hey what's going on readers and listeners, so many things have happened since I last wrote in this journal. Before I get back to where I last was let me update you on a few current events. I have been under surveillance by what I believe to be the feds or some organization. I have been watched and followed for a good while now. I can't say exactly how long it's been going on but I suspect it has probably been longer than what I even think. For some reason I have been singled out. It could stem from various reasons. However, I can assure you that I have been a straight-up law-abiding citizen as of lately. When I was younger I did some dirt, but nothing so bad that it would create this type of reaction. I suspect this may be an attempt to frame me or maybe even hurt me. I can definitely say that people I have recently met and even those I've known for years could be guilty of wanting to harm me or at least strong suspects. When I realized what was happening I immediately started my own investigation. I began to watch all potential suspects and all others very closely. In doing so I've been able to identify some people that are definitely guilty and some that are strong suspects. I will come back to this subject later. Let me get back to how my life began to change at the ending of file number one. After I had the dream of the guy and the girl that were deceiving me, I began to see my dream play itself out in real form. I mentioned how many of my dreams manifest into truth. This was definitely one of them. Without elaborating, a girl that I was involved with at the time admitted to having a sexual relationship with another guy. During this period I witnessed several strange events occur at the apartment complex where I lived. The month was either August or September and the year was 2006. I once again began to notice that I was being watched and even followed. I also suspected that I was being recorded or taped. My suspicion grew stronger as time went by. Eventually, I became convinced I was being taped. One day I was driving my car with an acquaintance, when I heard what sounded like a cassette tape stop, then rewind. Without casting my opinion I first asked the person I was with what she thought. Her reply was that it sounded like a tape recorder stopping then rewinding. After I reached my destination I tried looking for a recorder but I was unsuccessful. However this was one of a few scenarios that lead me to eventually believe that I was being recorded. One night I had a female friend over my apartment. This was someone I really felt I could trust. Yet, strange events caused me to believe she was not as trustworthy as I thought. Without getting too much into it, I'll just say she was definitely up to something. I'm sure some people will read this with great skepticism. Some of you may have mixed feelings about this story. However, others will read this and it will give them confirmation of their own experience. Eventually, I moved out of my apartment. I bought a house in the city of Hawthorne, California. My previous apartment was also in the city of Hawthorne. My new house was on the west side of the city next to Hawthorne High School. It was December of 2007, just a couple of weeks before Christmas. My new home address was in a beautiful part of Hawthorne, California. At the time I was working as a direct TV installer. I was also a long-time artist, producer, independent music and film executive. A friend of mine decided to move into the house with me. I figured that I would rent out rooms to help pay for the mortgage. My friend moved into the house before I did. I got there approximately two weeks later. I was ready to begin a new chapter in my life and put the past behind me. What I didn't know was that things would take a turn down a path that was similar to what I had just left. Continuing down this path led to new situations and even more familiar faces. The Mystery Files, File Number 3 Originally written December 2, 2007 Hello readers and listeners. Let me start by saying that someone is definitely following me. Once again I have proof. Before I get into it let me mention a few things. First of all this type of surveillance seems to be the work of either the feds or an organization that has money. 
There are a lot of people involved and some of which I know pretty well. I remember watching the movie JFK years ago. There is a part in the film when one of the actors, I can't think of the actor's name, explains how to point out the guilty people involved in a conspiracy. He said, not exactly in this order. Who has the power to make it happen, who has motive and who will benefit from the results? Basically this format can give you a pretty clear picture of who might be the guilty person or persons. After implementing this format I've come up with several people and or organizations. Federal agents, police officers of the Inglewood Police Department along with assistance from the immediate public including some of my friends and even family members. There is at least one more that fits into the guilty format of things. Listen to my audiobook Raising Queen White Blood Cells and it will give you additional information that will satisfy all curiosity. Anyway I'll explain what has happened lately. Every night for the last few months, I have been watched or followed. One night while sleeping on a couch at my mother's house, I was woken by a sound. I can't say for sure what the sound was. However I did wake up. When I first opened my eyes I saw what I thought to be a camera or camcorder staring down at me. At first I excused it, saying to myself that maybe I was tripping or even seeing things. Then one night while at my house sleeping on a couch, I woke up again to see a camera or camcorder aiming at me. In fact this happened at least two other times. After happening so many times, I became convinced that indeed these were real events. I gathered even more proof when I began to act like I was asleep. I was able to see the different cameras that were being used. One of the cameras were like a standardized video camera. But others were like the cameras seen in the movies. The slim stick-like objects with the visual ending that can bend up or under and still give an accurate visual. Someone was watching me or even recording me while I was asleep. But for what reason, what could they possibly accomplish by watching me while I sleep? I began to think and wonder why. I spent a couple of weeks thinking about it. This wasn't an easy situation to figure out. I began to spend more time thinking about it than expected. Initially I thought the video and or audio recorder was limited to my car or van. But I saw the video camera watching me in different areas of my house or at my mother's house. They seemed to watch me for long periods of time. It didn't make any sense to me. One morning I was watching the news. I saw that the police in Las Vegas just arrested O.J. Simpson for several charges. The first thing that came to my mind was that O.J. Simpson was set up. Because much of society was still angry about his previous murder acquittal. I also heard that one of the guys involved recorded the whole incident on tape. This confirmed my suspicion that O.J. was being set up. Many people will not let O.J. get away with what they feel was murder. Just as I was reacting to the O.J. news, something in my mind clicked. I thought about Johnny Cochran, the lead lawyer in the O.J. Simpson trial. He passed away, allegedly from a brain tumor. Brain tumor, I think you get the picture. The Mystery Files, File Number 4 Originally written on or about December 30, 2007. Dear readers and listeners, it has been one strange thing after another. I have an understanding that this wicked presence have been attacking me my friends and family members for much longer than I originally thought. Please refer to my audiobook Raising Queen White Blood Cells, for more understanding. Take notice of all the deaths that my neighborhood suffered during the time period of 1998 to the year 2002. Death was rare to my neighborhood before these times. We have always been a tight-knit community. Whenever we had problems with either ourselves or any other neighborhood, we always made it a point to handle problems in an appropriate manner. We were raised with a lot of the old values and substance that applied back in the day. We were different than most gangs and our decent qualities definitely stood out. I'm sure our great relationships between each other made others envious or jealous. There is definitely a possibility that we have and are being targeted for one reason or another. These incidents have led me to give some extra thought about the previous deaths we've suffered as a set or community. 
I did not realize how much we didn't actually know about the circumstances that surrounded the previous deaths of many or all my homeboys. There were lots of questions unanswered and no strong facts attached to any of the deaths. We really didn't know anything. There was no investigation done by us or the family. The hard times I'm going through now may have plagued my neighborhood, family and friends for much longer than I thought. During these times I will walk in faith. I will follow God and His Word. And I will not bow down to the wickedness that seeks to destroy me and my loved ones. I will fight back with one word at a time. I will not walk in fear I will continue to walk in faith. I will use the light of God to lead me down the road of success. I ask you the reader to pray for me, my family and community. I have really been watching what I do, where I go and who I talk to. I've been paying more attention to what I say and the reactions of other people. Recently I visited a website that targeted conspiracy, plots etc. I read several write-ups there. It was a very informative experience. The guy that put the website together said he used to be an advisor for the US government. He spoke about tons of situations and scenarios he experienced when working as an advisor for the government. He acknowledged that it was a dark and gruesome experience. Reading some of the write-ups on the website helped me prepare myself for what I'm dealing with right now. It's a shame that we have to fight for what God has blessed us with already. Life is a struggle but we shouldn't have to go through the struggle continuously. However people continue to choose to bow to darkness instead of prospering through struggle. I have a strong concern for all my loved ones. I intend to continue the fight for my life and my First Amendment rights. Please join me on this journey for success and peace. The Mystery Files, File Number 5 Originally written September 22, 2008 This is the fifth and final file of the Mystery Files. It is I the servant of rulers and the anointed one. The Lord made mention of my name at birth. Neil son I am his and he shall keep me. Blessed is the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit. To all inhabitants of the earth, repent and be baptized in the blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. All praise and glory to the one who sits on the highest throne in heaven. Power, glory and love to our Father in heaven and Jesus Christ the Son of God. Psalms 2, of the Holy Bible. Why do the nations conspire and the peoples plot in vain? The kings of the earth take their stand and the rulers gather together against the Lord and against His Anointed One. Let us break their chains, they say, and throw off their fetters. The one enthroned in heaven laughs, the Lord scoffs at them. Then He rebukes them in His anger and terrifies them in His wrath, saying, I have installed my King on Zion, my holy hill. I will proclaim the decree of the Lord, He said to me, You are my Son, today I have become your father. Ask of me, and I will make the nations your inheritance, the ends of the earth your possession. You will rule them with an iron scepter, you will dash them to pieces like pottery. Therefore you kings, be wise, be warned, you rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the sun, lest he be angry and you be destroyed in your way, for his wrath can flare up in a moment. Blessed are all who take refuge in Him. Please see all prophecy of the Holy Bible, including Revelations.